Hi, everybody. Um, thank you all for being here. Welcome to the very first of the spring 2022 design lecture series. We have got our lovely folks here in the audience. We also have a audience online, our live stream audience. Excuse me, this mask is really hard. Um, we're really excited to be here to share these lectures with you again for another semester. The series is co-hosted by PNCA Design, of course, our undergraduate program in graphic design and uh, Fisk Studios. I am Chelsea. Most of you know me probably up on the fourth floor. I work in illustration and graphic design. I'm also part of the design lecture team. Usually I'm behind the scenes. Today I'm in front of you all. So a little bit about our lecture series. We launched the PNCA Design Lecture Series in fall of 2016 as a way to open our doors and minds to the broad and vibrant possibilities in this field of design. Since then, we've moved it over various formats, panels, workshops, conversations, et cetera, et cetera, to show what all kinds of design creativity can be and do in the world. Before I turn it over to our lovely guest here, I'd like to give a special thanks to Rory up in our sound booth, to which we owe this whole series. <laughs> this would not happen without him. Um, he is why we have a live stream audience and why things just work. Um, I'd also like to thank Kristen Rogers Brown, the chair, or the, the lead of our graphic design department. She is not here with us today, but she is online. So hello, Kristen Rogers Brown. We love you and miss you. Um, I'd also like to thank Bijan and the Fisk team who continuously support our community and designed our lovely posters, continue to design our lovely posters. They're fantastic. Um, but, uh, the way things are going to go, we're going to hear from Bernadette first, and then we're going to open up the floor to questions. I encourage lots of questions. Um, it's, that's the best part of this series is to kind of dive into all the nitty gritty details and questions that you might have about her practice. Um, and then we also are opening up questions to our live stream audience, who do, so do not be shy online. Um, I will be able to read those out, so in the comments section, just ask your questions. I'll read them for Bernadette Little. So, a little bit about Bernadette Little. Our guest today is an artist, illustrator, and designer who currently works as a senior art director at Studio A, an internal, di an internal digital content creation uh, arm of Adidas. She believes vehemently in the transformative power of education, the arts, and the promotion of creative thinking in all fields. Bernadette believes creative expression is vital for communities to visualize their potential, to process the now, and to lay the fertile ground to get from one to the other. On her portfolio site, Bernadette quotes children's lit scholar, Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop, who writes, the arts can serve as both a window into possibilities and a mirror of realities. I'm particularly inspired by how this lens shapes Bernadette's view, uh, point of view across her work, whether it's art directing large scale creative campaigns, painting murals in our neighborhoods, experimenting with photography, collaborating with other artists and teaching or leading. And I love seeing her sketches and how her perspective as an illustrator shapes her vision as a creative director. So without further ado, I'd like to hand the mic and the floor over to Bernadette Little. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to run through my website and kind of take you through um, where my work is, how I got to where I am. Please feel free, as Chelsea was saying, to ask me any questions. I want this to be um, more of a discussion than me sort of lecturing to you. So I love the interaction. Um, so I guess I'll start at the beginning. I um, went to school and majored in illustration and product design. And that's why I'm starting on this page, because that's kind of how I first got introduced to Adidas. Uh, one of the company scouts went to my college, and I was lucky enough to uh, interview with them, and then get a position on the brand design team. And so brand design at Adidas is basically like their internal uh, advertising agency. They set the creative direction for the look and feel, the tone, uh, video content, any, uh, branding, anything like that. Uh, when I first got there, though, it was like a team of, let's say, like 
10 people in the basement trying to figure out what the heck to do at this giant company. <laughs> so that was kind of um, kind of a crazy ride to be in, like just getting out of school or actually still being in school. Um, but it was really great because I got to do a wide variety of things, explore illustration, graphic design, 3D design, and it really kind of began my uh, second education in, at Adidas. So a lot of what I was first doing were these sort of um, experimental explorations into uh, uh, our basketball uh, icon, James Harden. Um, I was originally on the basketball team within brand design. Um, and so everything we did was just surrounding this, this guy. Um, so it was really fun because I got to explore a bunch of different uh, illustration styles, a bunch of different graphic styles, um, and help to inspire some of the campaigns that came out. And this was a really transformative experience for me because I got to see uh, the inner workings of the company for the first time. And then, you know, I did the, the internship, went back to school, did a second one, they didn't have a job for me. So I applied to the Adidas Design Academy, which is a, um, a program that they do where they have like a rotating roster of design and uh, graphic design, apparel design, um, and footwear design. And you compete in this very like, it felt like a reality TV show. They fly you out to Germany, you work with all these folks. It's like a very strange interview process. Um, ultimately, I didn't get into the program, but it was a super cool experience and super um, uh, formative experience. And so it was another part of my like beginnings at the company. And you can really see the illustrative influence in my design here. Um, the assignment here was to take a song, take a lyric from a song, and create a poster and a graphic execution from that. And I chose DNA by Kendrick Lamar. Uh, he's one of my faves. And I chose to do this like crazy wild uh, uh, animalistic illustration. We then were asked to build that out um, kind of however we wanted. So what I wanted to do was build it out into a series of posters that also kind of got at this attitude of like fighting against the norm 100 to 1 and really like uh, visceral textures. So I did a series of three of those. And then I also screen printed a, a jacket. I just went all out for this. And then we were also tasked to create an all over print, an AOP, um, which I had no idea how to do at the time, but <laughs> figured it out. And that would later come in handy when I uh, went to Reebok and was an apparel graphics intern where we did t-shirts and AOPs and different types of uh, textural uh, graphic executions. So yeah, more illustrative work. You'll see at the beginning of my career, it's very much the illustration, the graphic design, everything combining into just this very explorative work I was able to do with the company, um, which was a great experience. And so we're always, always, always about the athlete. So we did these um, series of posters for these new basketball um, players. Um, and we did this big event for them and they used them as a background which was super, super cool. And then finally, oop, is it a load? I actually got a job. <laughs> uh, after three internships, going back and forth from the West Coast to the East Coast, finally got a job, and this was one of the first um, official projects that we did, that I was able to do with them. Um, so we did these screen printed heads of uh, various icons throughout all the sports that Adidas has. We have soccer players, basketball players, et cetera. And we actually physically did these uh, screen prints and then were able to layer them and animate them, which was really cool. Um, and then those various uh, icons and celebrities uh, posted them on their social media, which was super cool to see. So yeah, that's a little bit of that process. And like I said, stop me at any point in time if you have any questions or anything like that. And then I will show you this as well. My time at Adidas, and it, uh, I realize I'm talking to the graphic design department, but my time at Adidas has been such a uh, conglomeration of illustration, design, explorative photography. And I think that's one thing that um, I kind of really want to 
express the importance of at this talk as well is like having varied interests. Like you can have your thing, obviously, like graphic design is your thing, but you should also like know how to do a little bit more, explore a little bit more, always be curious. That's really helped me in my career. Um, so this project is an illustration that we did for James Harden in a, uh, an event to get him to sign onto the brand. Um, so I did the illustration for a pitch book that they showed to him to you know, try to make him look really cool and get him to sign on. And then I was also able to, with the little bit of uh, 3D design skills that I had, help them to uh, design the space and actually like pitch to get the money to build this space. So these are some of the, the renderings that we did with the various designs and working with the actual design directors. And we wanted to really make sure it was like a very special experience for him. And then they actually built it, which was wild. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe I'm walking into this thing that, you know, uh, I helped extrude a couple squares and they actually made it. Um, so, so that was really cool and kind of epitomizes what I was saying before about, you know, you have to kind of, uh, it, it helps to know a little bit of, a little bit of everything, especially in this uh, industry. And then we did something similar for another athlete because that was a success. We actually got him to sign on and then we did it again. And then so jumping forward in my little timeline at Adidas, um, from being in brand design and being an intern and having a more illustrative uh, lens on my work, uh, I was able to grow there and do more actual art direction, which was super cool and something I really never ex uh, expected myself to do. Um, so this project called Badge popped up that we were tasked with, and it is um, a multi-sport, multi-season photo shoot. So basically they were like, hey, we have like 20 sports categories, go shoot content for all of them. And we were like, oh shit, okay. Let's figure out how to do this, because none of us had ever done anything that big before. Um, <clears throat> so we got together collaboratively as graphic designers and art directors and planned a month-long shoot. And this shoot happened by, uh, annually or biannually for like the past three years. Um, and so we were able to go to Cape Town, we were able to go to New York, China, and uh, do these large photo shoots again and again, which was an amazing experience. And this really tested, you know, a kind of different side of the brain, like how do you use an illustrative graphic design brain and then art director photographer to get these images that you can see. Um, so I think within this, the importance of being able to communicate your idea was really instilled in me. And uh, I think it's almost just as important as having a good idea, being able to communicate it and sell it through and get people to buy into it. So yeah, we captured some cool things for swimming. This is a category called athletics with this like athleisure. And then let's see if this video plays. I won't play the whole thing, but we were supposed to capture these little snippets that were played in store in different ads. Staring at stars yeah. in various places Doesn't on the internet. Cause everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants and nobody's ashamed. Everybody wants wants, wants to be famous. Everybody wants and nobody's ashamed. Everybody wants you to know the name. Everybody wants and nobody's ashamed. Everybody wants wants wants, wants to be famous. Yeah, so we had to make a couple of those for every category and then the photography to accompany it. And I think this was like really transformative as well because uh, I, I know for me, being an art school kid, I was like very quiet, you know, I, uh, you know, I talked when I needed to talk. And this was definitely like you're thrown into the swimming pool, figure out how to talk to people, figure out how to art direct models, figure out how to, uh, uh, get people to at least look like they're having fun on set. <laughs> so this was like a whole new 
new set of skills that I was able to pick up, which was really, really cool, because then you were able to work on projects, not only from getting and capturing the photography, but all the way to doing the design that might show up in store or on the website. So I'll just scroll through these so you guys can get a sense of everything that we captured from basketball to running to handball and uh, working for an international company as well. I did not realize how big handball was or know what it was until we actually shot it. Yeah, working with kids is always great and fun. And yeah, just capturing so much content, having to think about all the touch points that the consumer might see it, all the various aspects that you might need to capture video or photography for. So it was, a, it was quite an experience, to say the least. And then some images of, it, of some of the content up in our New York flagship store. Then some pictures of me. <laughs> OK, so I think I'll go to next. Um, so the Bash project ended, and then we got more into straight up creative direction. Um, and I won't play these videos. They're mostly talking about like guidelines and stuff like that. But it is um, a good exercise in, once again, the importance of being able to communicate your vision and communicate um, how you want people to create, how you want people to move. So let's, well, I'll play a little bit of it. Let's see. Whoop, not that one. Let's see if this one plays. Oop, fail. Well, <laughs> still to the point of uh, kind of expanding from the actual photo shoot itself to an even larger scale of creative direction. Excuse me. Do, 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 do. And then within that, I was really uh, happy to be able to work on this project at Adidas called Honoring Black Excellence, called HBE. And so basically, the whole initiative is around moving Black History Month from the celebration of black people during Black History Month from just one month to doing these initiatives all year long. So doing grassroots campaigns, doing give back, celebrating the folks in the neighborhood who are doing something amazing just for the people around them, you know, celebrating the, the beauty and the mundane. So these uh, videos are called Welcome to the Kingdom. And it does just that, highlighting folks within the community who are doing something cool, uh, highlighting uh, like coaches who are doing like amazing things. I'll play just a little bit of this. And I was involved in the creation of the word mark, the video, the photography uh, capture, um, and creating the creative direction for that. So just a little snippet there. And it's really interesting to see once you do create a direction and get into art direction, um, how people take your, your initial ideas and grow them into something even more. Because for this campaign, I was involved at the initiation of it, but now it's become various murals that Adidas has done, various collaborations with different artists, and it's, it's just taken on a life of its own, which is really beautiful. And then currently, I made a jump to um, Studio A, which is another internal digital content creation team at Adidas. And right now we do all the, well not all, but a lot of the uh, imagery capture for the website, for the app, and for um, you know all the little ads that you see popping up that you didn't really want, but we do them. <laughs> um, so I'll take you through this style one. Uh, so yeah, we do the, the photo shoot and we have to art direct where this goes on the site, how it shows up. We do, we now have copywriters on the team, which is really cool and flexing a different muscle, um, figuring out how to work with them and how they play off the visuals to create the, the words. Um, and it's been a really exciting experience. I've only been in this new position for the past uh, six months or so, so I'm still learning and growing, but it's been, it's been really cool. So yeah, you can see all the various touch points where the photography shows up. And yeah, that's kind of like a little bit of my backstory. Um, 
I would love to know what you guys will want to know more information about. Uh, I do have another deck on here that kind of goes into how we begin to build out these shoots, if you guys want to know that. Or, okay, cool. So let's see. They told me a shortcut. I did it wrong. Okay. No worries. Okay, so this plays into what I was talking about earlier about being able to communicate your idea. It's one thing to be able to design something that looks really great, but when you work at such a big company, you also have to understand that like 50 other people are gonna have to make what you make and remake it. So one of the, and buy into it and sell into the, to your idea. So a large part of my job has become creating these pitch decks. So why are we shooting this photography? Why are we using these models? Why do we need this backdrop, et cetera? Um, so the, the imagery you just saw, this is the pitch deck I created to sell that idea in. So one thing I wanted to uh, get down on was this kind of like, or knock out was this kind of like self-serious attitude that I feel like a lot of ads have. I just wanted it to be a little bit more joyful, a little bit brighter. Um, and so I wanted to put that up front. And then there's an art direction section, and I feel like it's very helpful when you're trying to get people to understand where you're coming from to also include music. So I included a link to a music video in here so people can really understand the vibe of what I was talking about. Um, and what you're really trying to do is like uh, world creation within, within uh, your pitch deck. So what are the colors, what are the mood, what are the, what are the textures that we're trying to evoke? Um, and getting s examples that maybe not be exactly close uh, or exactly what you were thinking, but very close and kind of help paint that picture for folks. So we broke it down into seasonal colors. And then how did we want to capture the footwear? We wanted to do something that was a little bit more interesting, a little bit more unexpected, um, and a little bit more fun. Um, so we broke it down even more, just making it uh, really easy for people to get a hold of the idea. And then this is all the technical stuff that goes into like the actual graphic design of what we need to do for the site. So where, <laughs> where are the safe zones, where are the imagery, where are the call, where are the calls to action lie, where, where do we need the, the focus of the imagery to be, all the kind of nuts and bolts behind the images we pick and uh, uh, where things need to go. So I'll go through that. Then we also had to make like a, um, a run of show and then styling inspirations as well. So just showing y'all like everything it takes to create these few images that go on the website. And of course, casting and staging and just all of the elements that go into it. So I went through that a little bit fast, but if y'all have any questions, please let me know. Um, yeah, I wanted to dig into that a little bit deeper. And then I will go back to my website. Sorry, I took that down. And then so the art direction the uh, and the Adidas is like one side of me, <laughs> but I also wanna make sure I'm doing things that kind of harken back to like my first love, which was illustration. So around town, I do like to, or I've had the opportunity to paint a lot of murals, um, which has been wild because I never thought I would be able to. Um, so this one is an homage to actually one of my best friends and celebrating black boy joy and like dreams and potential is down in Chinatown. And that was just a, this was the first mural I ever got to paint. So that was a really cool experience. And then the second one, which was kind of an homage to my, my little sister, um, talking about dreams, quoting the Langston Hughes quote, which I think is very topical for, you know, the times we're in right now. <laughs> And then this was an amazing project that um, myself and two other muralists, uh, Molly Mendoza and Elizabeth Heidel, were asked to paint the back of ASK, which is Airway Science for Kids, which is a program that helps um, black and brown kids or um, uh, at-risk youth to get involved in the sciences. So they asked us just to paint a mural that has something to do with flying. <laughs> so. We, and aside from that, we had full rain. So we did this colorful collage of birds and planes and these faces coming out of the clouds and some process from that, from that mural here. And 
And then one last one, uh, I did it on Coke and Market with five other black artists in Portland. Um, and it was just an homage to black love. And that was really cool because the market itself is owned by um, a black family. And yeah, that's kind of my like whole bio. Um, I think what I really wanted to instill was like throughout all of my work and throughout all of my journey, the importance of being collaborative and being explorative and really striving to, to uh, explore different mediums and connect and collaborate with folks because none of these projects would have been possible without that. Um, did y'all have any questions about diving deeper into anything or I can continue to click around or how do y'all, how do y'all want to go about it? Um, can I ask, like, how you For sure. I'm gonna actually, oh, I can, I can um, we're gonna move into some Q and A and I'm gonna hand around the mic as people have questions just for our online audience so they can hear it. So thank you, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Just don't, if you don't mind repeating. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as you showed your murals, I was just wondering if you um, contacted them, did they contact you? Did you have a connection with them, all that? Yeah, actually I get started through uh, another friend and graphic designer named uh, Christine Miller. And she actually had a connection with an organization that helps folks paint murals. So that was just straight through, just knowing somebody. And then from that process, um, people just see your work around and contact you and, or you know somebody who knows somebody. So yeah. Um, I was just wondering what an all over print is. <laughs> oh, sorry. An all over print is kind of like what's on your shirt. So it's a, it's a pattern uh, that's literally all over the fabric. It's not in a section and you can't really see uh, where it ends and begins. Um, do you think your message of your mural work shows in your professional career, um, like your activism in, or your social justice, or uh, is there an overlap between those? I hope so. I try to. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it comes through, but with a lot of these campaigns, it also isn't lost on me the scope and the amount of people that see them. So I think casting and thinking about the lens that you're photographing people is very important. So I try to be very cognizant of that because it's, it's, it's the little subliminal things that actually kind of like impact folks and like if somebody sees themselves in a positive light or somebody sees somebody that looks like them um, in clothing or doing something that they wanna do. Um, so I definitely try to. It can be always as overt as the HBE campaign, but you know, where, where I can uh, try to make things matter, I try to, try to go for that. That was a great question. <laughs> Do you have like a dream project or like a dream collab? Ooh, yeah. a dream project? Man, if I could do something like Euphoria, that'd be sick. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, because the art direction, the story, like that would just be amazing. Um, yeah, so something like that would be awesome. Something longer form where you can really, really push it with the art direction. Um, because at the end of the day, working for a footwear company, the goal is always generally to sell something, right? And that is limiting to some capacity. Um, so if the, uh, the end goal was just to entertain, whew, that'd be so fun. <laughs> I have a question to follow up, kind yes. of along the dream job sort of thing. Yeah. Um, just based on your talk, it seems you take a lot of risks and, ch and jump into stuff that you're not always comfortable with, um, but then just shoot your shot at it. Yeah. Do you have advice for young designers and students here that, about um, kind of taking those challenges without feeling like they're take, biting off more than they can chew? For sure. I mean, uh, you're obviously going to have to know yourself and know your own capabilities, but I'd say go for it. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of one who you can always look something up or Google it or um, ask for help. Um, so as long as you have like a vision and a drive to to make that thing as good as you can, I would say just go for it. We're all just out here winging it, you know. So just try something. <laughs> um, I was just wondering um, what inspired your 
uh, illustration initially. It looks kind of like it might be inspired by comic books or something. I was really interested to see what kind of uh, made you get going with illustration in the first place. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, or not as much lately, but I was a big, huge comic book nerd. I was the one who had, like, instead of, like, the actual comic book series, I would just get those, like, in comic book encyclopedias, like, and just, like, study all the characters. Um, like, I initially paired the illustration with the product design to... Uh, thinking I was going to maybe be able to do pre-production for movies or something like that. Um, obviously, things took a turn, and I'm so happy where I ended up, but that's kind of like where I started. The, the, the comic book thing is very close to my heart. Um, I was just wondering if you could talk a bit about doing like large-scale murals and like how that process works <laughs> for sure so generally so for this one i had no fucking idea what i was doing <laughs> i should not have cussed like that but i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> um i just threw it up there getting the proportions right was like terrible that's part of the reason half of this is clouds um but <laughs> as i learned and grew and just talked to more mur muralists one of the things that i think is the best way to get it up there is to do a doodle grid. So you'll basically just make any kind of symbols or s that you want, any type of marks that you want. Uh, photograph the wall, take it into Photoshop and straighten it as much as you can and then overlay your piece on it. Um, and then you can just use that as like an impromptu grid to get your things up there in the correct proportions. And it's usually pretty quick too. Yeah, and then you just fill in, fill in the blanks, color in the lines. <laughs> Yeah, I can keep talking about the mural thing too. I mean, it's um, it's been something new for me and really something fun. Um, learned the process of learning how to do it has been incredible. And then I think one thing about murals, which are high visibility, and the advertising, which is high vis visibility, you never know the impact that it has on folks. So not only like is it fun to actually paint them and be able to paint that big and get that like physically in your body, which can also kind of be exhausting, but um, the folks who walk by, people who interact, kids who see you painting, like the reactions from that has been a part of that experience that I wasn't anticipating being so impactful. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I thought that was important to add in there. It's, it's, it's a really cool thing. I think everybody should go and paint a mural. <laughs> Uh, a lot of us are developing, I guess, creative processes right now. So if there was something that you would recommend for us to push ourselves on in kind of approaching new projects, do you have any suggestions? My biggest thing would probably be to, um, as much as you can, think about the full scope and story of the projects that you're working on. Like, I think if you want to do something like I do in terms of art direction or anything like that, thinking about things as sort of mini campaigns, like where all is this going to be seen? Are there any opportunities I might be missing out on by not designing for, I don't know, int uh, Instagram, Pinterest, or TikTok, or whatever? Um, or is there anything I'm missing out on by not exploring like something in uh, like the VR space or something like that? You know, just figuring out how to take your projects and incorporating that next level of storytelling. I think says a lot when looking at portfolios, when examining like who an artist is and their perspective, um, how far are they willing to take it and how deep are they telling that story? Um, do you ever feel stuck one way or another as an illustrator or a graphic designer or do you find it pretty easy to, to bridge the two? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think that's why I'm enjoying doing these murals so much, because um, it allows me to flex that other muscle. Um, yeah, because sometimes at work, uh, there's not as much opportunity to explore in that realm. Um, so yeah, there are definitely times where I feel stuck or I feel conflicted or it's like, you know, who am I? What am I doing? Um, but I always try to find the time to flex that muscle, even in little ways. If it's not a mural sketching in my sketchbook or or you know, finding ways to incorporate illustration and design and the art direction, or collaborating with other folks on different projects is always huge to like work those different muscles. Um, 
so yeah, I'm not immune to feeling feeling stuck and all that, but I just try to find little ways to to flex all the muscles. We have a question um, from online for you. Um, Kristen Rogers Brown, actually, KRB's here. She says she loves hearing you talk about the connections in your work to music. Are are there other maybe unexpected, maybe not ways that music comes into your work? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm always like painting or designing to a playlist. And I feel like that is very apparent in the rhythms that come out in whatever I'm making, whether it be an illustration or a graphic design or whatever. Um, I feel like that always kind of influences the way that you move and the way that you make those marks or the way, even the way like, I don't know, that you're making a grid or something or the way that you fill it, you know? Um, so I don't know, I feel like, I feel like all these things are very interwoven and connected. Um, she also asked, has that helped other folks connect to your ideas? Oh, definitely, I think so. Yeah. I think uh, the visual arts, just like music, it's just another like basic human language. Um, and I think it allows people into your brain in a way that words sometimes can't. I, you know, and especially, I'm not a writer, I'm not a copywriter. Um, so sometimes I can try to say things as elegantly or as, or as you know, masterfully as I can, but sometimes it's just that, that note in a song or that like maybe it's a minor chord versus a major chord and somebody's like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. Like it's supposed to be blue, not this, or it's supposed to be bright and not dark or something, yeah. Um, was there something like really unexpected about moving from like being a student in illustration or like moving into like the market uh, specifically? Like was it different than you thought it would be to like start working or like was it what you thought it would be? Oh, I had no idea what it was gonna be. <laughs> I was just like, I'm here, I got a job, this is great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, yeah, it, it's definitely different than I thought it was gonna be because I feel like I used the tools that I learned in school, but then gained like another whole set. Um, I think putting the things that you learn in school into like real life application just teaches you in a different, whole different way. Like even, like I was saying, like even learning how to talk to folks who aren't artists to communicate your idea. Like a lot of, in my job, I have to talk to our marketing people or, you know, people who are from different countries or anything like that. So it's also that process of learning how to say what you, learning how to communicate what you want that I think um, school didn't necessarily prepare me for, which is fine. You can't prepare it. I mean, the one for the infinite amount of people that you have to talk to, but that was something that was maybe unexpected and a little hard to learn, honestly. Um, for people who are wanting to maybe like do internships at Adidas, do you have any like uh, tips or things you should like give put in your portfolio or any of that? Uh, yeah, well it uh, well I, got, I was going to say what do you want to do? But you're all graphic design students, so I'm assuming. <laughs> um, but yeah, so honestly, building out things with that holistic story in mind is big. Like I think you've heard me talk about that more than actual graphic design like technicality because that is so important. Um, when working at a big brand like this. Like we can always help folks maybe learn more technical skills or learn what buttons to press or you know anything like that. But it's a different kind of skill set to um, really want to tell a bigger story and understand how to uh, augment those visuals uh, across different touch points. Like what does it look like on a website? What does it look like in an email? What does it look like on Instagram? What does it look like on Pinterest? How do those things differ and why? Um, what does it look like in North America versus Europe, you know? Um, so you don't have to go into all that detail, but just like little inklings of expanding that narrative a little bit further, I think we'll go far. We have a question from our online audience. Hi, online um, audience. <laughs> <laughs> what is your process for creating mood boards and pitch decks, and where do you collect images and inspiration from? Yeah, um, so, Honestly, <laughs> I just sit down and scroll a lot. Like I'm on the internet way too much. Um, but I, I recently just jumped back on Pinterest um, and I've recently found a website called Save It, I think it's Save It with like two E's. 
um, which is great design inspiration. Um, and honestly, just looking through different friends' feeds, looking through who other people know, who's being tagged in this, um, and trying to find the little like diamonds in the rough in the internet. Um, so just like a lot of hours online searching and also trying to find the weird connections between things, you know, the unexpected connections between things. And then that usually sparks a bigger idea. Are there any other questions? Does anyone want to share a grievance of their own? <laughs> oh, here we go. Hey, I'm down for grievances. What's up? <laughs> okay, Semi-grievance. <laughs> um, when you're not in the headspace to create anything and you're just kind of at a low, because um, you know it's sometimes harder than other times to get yourself out of it. So when you're really at a low, what's your go-to thing to kind of get the juices flowing again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I've been finding myself in that space a lot with this whole pandemic and all this craziness of the world. But um, listening to music, watching movies, or talking to friends, or like going through old sketchbooks, seeing like what like really old sketchbooks, like sketchbooks from when I was like in high school or something, and seeing like like oh like I still draw that stuff. Like maybe there's something there. Maybe that that idea can influence this new thing that I'm doing. Um, so yeah, those, those things always usually get something going. And if not, I'll just go take a nap. <laughs> I love that. I've, um, I love the idea of looking through old sketchbooks because mm -hmm. sometimes you see stuff too and you're like, whoa, actually, I thought that was a bad idea, but now I'm seeing a way to change it. Exactly, Once yeah. you like, learn new skills and different tools, mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, I'm imagining that the, the environment of Adidas is quite high pressure. Um, does it ever get overwhelming with all the deadlines all the time and things? Oh, for sure. Okay. It totally does. Like, um, luckily, I have a team that's very understanding of that. I think one of the things that's kept me at Adidas for so long is uh, the people that are there. And the, the team that I found myself on is very empathetic and acknowledging, you know, we're not little robots creating this stuff for humans. Um, but it does become a lot. You become really good at organization really fast. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Um, I'll check online one more time. Any questions from our online audience? Come on, lay them on me. I'm an open book. <laughs> well, I guess if we have no more questions, um, we'll wrap, we'll wrap things up and let Bernadette, uh, close out, but, um, thank you everybody so much for being here. This was a really great opportunity. We're so grateful, Bernadette, that you of were course. able to come in yeah. and share your experience and your expertise. Um, thanks to, again to Rory, uh, for, for doing all the sound and the live streaming, KRB for everything she does. She is the backbone behind this whole series as is Bijan. Um, so thanks to our design lecture team and thanks, thank you to you all for being here. And thank you more than anything to Bernadette Little. <laughs> of course, no worries. And I know it can be like a little intimidating to ask questions up here. If y'all guys have any other things or wanna know some more stuff, um, I can give out uh, my um, email. Feel free to hit me up. I'm always down to chat or whatever.